Hey guys, I hope you're all having a very good day. My name is Lilia and welcome to a new episode of my Back to Law School slash University series on my YouTube channel. So in this episode number four, I'm going to be talking about the difference between American law school and European or specifically Dutch law school. I have received so many questions about this topic on my Instagram, on my YouTube channel, ever since I moved from the Netherlands to the United States to study law there. If you don't want to miss any of my other videos or specifically any of my other back to law school slash university videos, please hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well. I don't want to make this intro very long because I'm very pro on doing that. So let's jump right in. So before I'm going to talk about the major differences between the American law school system and the Dutch law school system, I just quickly wanted to talk a little bit about my law school journey for everyone that is new on my channel and doesn't know. I started with my law degree when I was 19 years old at the University of Groningen. I started with the Bachelor in Laws or LLB focused on Dutch law and that takes three years. After I finished my bachelor's, I pursued a master's degree and this was an LLM. Most LLMs, not only in the Netherlands but all over the world, last one year. But the research master in law, the master's that I did, was two years because it was focused on researching as well. But before I finished my master's degree in the Netherlands, I actually went on an exchange in the US, in Washington DC. I attended the George Washington University Law School for one semester as an exchange student. But after two months, I realized that I wanted to do the full LLM degree. So I applied for the general LLM that also lasts one year. In May, I graduated from my master's degree in the United States. Okay guys, that was a little backstory that I wanted to tell you. And now I'm going to focus on the differences between the American system and the Dutch system. I quickly want to put out a disclaimer that in this video, I'm solely going to talk about the differences that I experienced so these are all based on my personal experience studying law at the University of Groningen and studying law at the George Washington University. So I'm not going to be talking about an American JD program because that is not what I attended, even though I had exactly the same courses as JD students as well, but just not as much. Um, but if any of you have questions specifically about the JD program, I'll maybe make a new video about that also, I feel not 100% comfortable talking about that since I've only attended the LM program and not the JD program. So the first difference that I noticed between the two law schools is the way of teaching. In the Dutch system, we have two different types of lectures. We have actual lectures. Those are held in a very big room with pretty much like 100 people or more and those last between two to three hours and that is just the professor explaining stuff. Then we also have working groups and they can be compared to seminars in the American system. Those are classes that are usually very small between 15 to 30 people and then you have a different lecturer, usually more of a professor assistant if that makes sense, teaching assistant that is actually going to talk through different cases and you also always have to make an assignment for that. So for the lectures you have to read uh, in the book, in the study material, while for the working groups you actually have to make assignments that you're also tested on and sometimes you have to hand them in beforehand and you get graded on them. When you start with your law school journey you will first focus on all the basics and just understanding the law as a system and then when you have a general understanding things will become more difficult and you will have more advanced topics and courses. But if you keep up with everything, you're for sure able to understand everything. Another thing is that the lectures are focused on you understanding the material. So even though you usually do get some assignments to read before the lecture, a lot of professors actually encourage you to read through the material after the lectures because the professor is going to use their lecture time to explain everything that you read or are going to read after the lecture. When it comes to the American system, the educational system has more of an active approach. In the American system, you only have lectures and these lectures usually last 
between one hour and a half, sometimes two. So they are way shorter than the lectures in the Netherlands. However, usually you have between two to three of these lectures a week, while in the Netherlands you only have one to two, and only sometimes you have three of them. The American system is way more active because they are using the Socratic method. This means that everyone has an assigned seat in the lecture hall and during every class there's one or sometimes like two or three people that the professor will point at and they have to answer one of the questions. This is always in regards to the study material that you had to read before the lecture. And the participation in class is usually 20% of your final grade for that course as well. And the professor usually not only asks you one question, but sometimes sticks with you through the whole lecture of like one to two hours. This means that you really have to understand every little itty bitty thing about the material before you already go to the lecture which can be quite stressful because law school books are not very easy to understand and sometimes you really need that explanation from the professor and you don't really get that. This means that the American system will kind of drop you in the middle of all the legal issues without actually explaining a lot of the basics. Another thing is that you usually don't have assignments to make uh, in the American system, which I personally find really annoying because I love making assignments to really understand the material, but instead you get a bigger amount of reading material that you have to completely understand before the class starts because the American system uses the Socratic method. The second difference between the American and the Dutch system is the competitiveness of the students. When it comes to the Netherlands, the law school culture is what I like to call pretty chill. And by that, I mean that most law school students are not very competitive at all. Law school in the Netherlands doesn't really have a very difficult selection procedure. This means that pretty much anyone can get into law school. There isn't an LSAT system as in the US. Now, side note, I actually was the only year that the University of Groningen tried out an LSAT system, so I actually had to take a similar test to the LSAT, but other than that, it never happened because the year after me, they already abolished it. And I know all my American students are going to be like, what? No LSAT? Oh my god, that's going to make law school so easy. No, that's because in the Netherlands, the selection procedure is actually the whole degree itself. Pretty much 50% of the people that initially get into law school in the Netherlands drop out. So a dropout rate of 50% is just crazy high. And that's because so many people get in, but when they start taking exams, they are just not able to keep up and they're not able to get their propedeutic diploma, which is a requirement to stay in law school in the Netherlands, and then they have to drop out. However, this does mean that there are a lot of people in law school, especially in the initial years of law school, that are more focused on social life and less focused on law school and are definitely not competitive. Most law students in the Netherlands will totally be fine just passing their exam and not really having a good grade because they are just not as competitive. Another factor that you need to keep in mind is that people are way younger when they go into law school in the Netherlands, somewhere between 18 to 19, and at that time sometimes it's really hard to choose between partying and actually studying for your exams. In no way am I bashing Dutch people by the way, but this is just our culture in the Netherlands. It's just not really competitive. People just don't really care that much about their grades. I personally was always very different because I always was very worried about my grades. I just always wanted to pass my exams with a good grade. However, when I moved to the United States to study law there, I completely blended in and I was possibly not even competitive enough compared to the other students there. As I already mentioned, in the United States, it's all about getting into law school. If you get into law school, if you pass your LSAT, you're pretty much set for your whole law school career. I'm going to be talking about this a little bit more when I'm discussing the grading and the examination process in both uh, law schools, 
but in general, pretty much no one fills an exam. And that's unheard of in the Netherlands, where pretty much 50% fails every exam. Also, American law students are usually way older. Rather than being 18 or 19, like in the Netherlands, they're between 24 to 26. A lot of people in the Netherlands are partying, while in the US, a lot of people are already married. That's kind of the difference in mindset. The most important reason why people in the US are so much more competitive than in the Netherlands is because in the US, you are graded on a curve. Grading on a curve means that there can only be a certain amount of percentage of people in the top of the curve, which means an A or an A+. So when you take an exam, your grade is not only dependent on your actual answers, if you have them wrong or if you have them right, but also on how other people in your class performed. So even though you kind of deserve the A because your answers were A worthy, because someone else had just a little bit more of an extensive explanation, just a little bit more of a better understanding of the material than you, they will get the A and you will get an A minus. This creates a very competitive and also in my opinion, a little bit of a toxic um, environment. No one is going to help you. Like obviously if you're friends, if you know each other, if you have some deal together, if you study together, something like that, people will help you. But in most instances, they won't. Because if they give you their notes, that means that they are lowering their own chances of getting an A, of getting that good grade. So the last thing that I want to talk about is the examination and the grading process in the US and in the Netherlands. The grade system in the Netherlands ranges from 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest and 1 obviously being the lowest. And to pass an exam, you need between a 5.5 to a 6. In the Netherlands, everything is graded in absolute, I think it's called. So if you got all the answers right, you will get a 10. And it doesn't matter how many 10s there are. In the Netherlands, we have mostly closed book exams. Closed book exams are the exams most people are used to. The exam usually takes about three hours. In those three hours, you usually get between seven to 10 questions. And if you just start immediately with the exam, you're pretty much always able to finish it and sometimes to even reread all the questions. Most of the questions are very specific and they only require quite a short answer. However, in order to find that very short answer, you really need to be well read and you really need to understand the material because if you don't understand the material, you're never going to find that specific answer that the professor is looking for. And the other thing is that we also have cases that we need to answer. However, the exams are definitely not easy and pretty much 50% fails every exam. If you failed your exam, you have the chance of taking a reset. The reset exam is usually a little bit more difficult than the original exam. So the grading system in the US is a little bit more difficult in my opinion because you have the letters F to A with F being equivalent to a 1 in the Netherlands and A being equivalent to 8 or higher. And then you also have a GPA, which is your average grade, which is between a 1 and a 4, with 4 being the highest. The exams in the US are mostly open book exams. There are some closed book exams, but most of the exams that I had were open book exams. This means that you're able to bring your book your outlines and any other study material with you to the exam. I mentioned this before as well, and a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous that you have an open book exam. But let me tell you, open book exams are way more difficult than closed book exams. While in closed book exams, even though you have some cases that you need to answer, usually it's a lot about memorizing and obviously also understanding, but it's mostly focused on memorizing certain parts uh, that are important. However, the American exams don't have any questions that are, I guess, more basic and just require you to memorize and understand the material. American exams focus on critical reflection in their exams. This means that you're pretty much required to write a whole essay with criticism and positive aspects 
of a certain law of a certain system. So this is kind of a next level up when it comes to understanding your study material because you not only need to understand it but you also need to be able to reflect on it which is way more difficult. Another thing which makes it very difficult is that even though it is an open book exam all professors always emphasize that you should study for it as a closed book exam. That is because the US likes to really test us on time pressure. That is why exams are made in a way that you cannot possibly answer every question. And this freaked me out so much coming from a Dutch system. When you're not able to answer one or definitely two questions, you're definitely going to fail your exam. In the US system, the exams are made in a way that you're never able to finish the exam. But obviously, you want to finish as much as possible. So this means that you're being completely stressed out in the examination room, just writing away as much as you can in order to at least try to finish as much as possible. This means that you pretty much don't have time to open any of your study materials because you need to spend all your time writing the actual answers. So even though it is an open book exam, in general, you can treat it as a closed book exam, but then with way more difficult questions. Obviously, the American system also grades on the curve, as I explained before, which means that even if you did a good job, if your peers did a little bit of a better job, you won't get that A. It may seem like the American system now is way more difficult than the Dutch system, but there's one thing that makes the American system way easier than the Dutch system when it comes to examinations. And that is that no one fails an exam. And with no one, I literally mean no one. And that is because the American system just doesn't fail people. If you take an exam, it's pretty much impossible to fail. So this makes American system a little bit of a weird one because you get super, super, super stressed out for the exams but then you don't have to worry about the result that much because in the end you will pass your exam. But then again, American students are more competitive so they only want A's and they're not happy if they don't get an A. So it's definitely a very weird dynamic and that's also why there are no residents because no one fails exams. So those were kind of the things that I wanted to compare the Dutch and American law school system with. I also quickly want to emphasize that the level of the study material, so the actual material that you have to read, is pretty much the same. I don't find Dutch study material easier than American study material. However, the American system is more difficult because of the overload of study material, the Socratic method, and the competitiveness of the students, and obviously the curve. Even though the American system makes you more stressed and is a little bit more toxic, you don't have to be very scared of ruining an exam, of not passing an exam, because no one ever fails an exam. The Dutch legal system is way more chill and if you just keep up with your homework and always go to the lectures, you will 100% understand everything. However, the exams are difficult in a way that pretty much 50% fails every exam, but then again, you do have a reset after that. So guys, this is the end of my video about US law school and Dutch law school or European law school and how both of them differ. I hope this video was helpful and answered all of your questions. I know a lot of you guys have been asking questions about this topic, so I hope you're excited I finally made a video about it. There's also a blog post that goes with this video that I will link in the description box down below. But if you have any other questions or if you want to comment on any of the things that I mentioned that you found personally very surprising or is very different at your law school or university, let me know in the comments down below because I would love to read it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because more back to school videos are coming. I guess that's it. I'll see you guys in two days because I'm uploading a new video every other day. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.